On this episode of Heartbeats, a young journalist and editor must ingest radioactive iodine to fight off thyroid cancer. Because the radioactive iodine has been linked uh, to other tumors. And in the midst of complex surgery for an injured back, Carol's team tests for movement to see if she suffered catastrophic spinal damage. Carol, move your hand. Squeeze my hand here. On the last episode, Carol, a foreign trained doctor, decided to have risky surgery to free her from the excruciating pain of a broken back. It's pain that has twisted her life beyond recognition, reducing her ability to work and study. I have pain for 24 hours a day and I want I need a, a, a life and I haven't had a life for the past couple of years. I really want to get off the pain medication that is totally destroying my life. And everybody around me has told me that my personality has changed totally. I wanted to start being myself again. She's having spine surgery at Sunnybrook and Women's that will remove a broken bone, then fuse and stabilize two vertebrae on either side of it. Carol won't soon forget the fall she suffered nearly three years ago that changed her life. I was walking on a ramp with high heels, of course. I tripped and I fell. I fell nine feet on rocks, and I didn't feel anything right away. Then I laid in the hospital and slowly the pain started coming. They took the x-ray and emerged there, and they told me that I had sustained a pretty bad burst fracture. And that's when my wonderful journey to pain started. My back feels like somebody hit it with a baseball bat. Carol's surgery is complex and risky, since removing the broken bone will necessarily have to expose the spinal cord. And that could cause Carol to suffer permanent paralysis if things don't go well. Okay, I'm gonna loosen this up, and something should happen. There we go. Dr. Ford and his team will now compress the spine and then wake Carol up to ensure they haven't damaged her spinal cord. Okay, tighten them up. Okay, Bev, start waking her up. Can we get her to move her hands? See if she can move her hands. Yeah, she's good. And so we will be waking her up, asking her to move her hands, move her toes. Move your hand. Squeeze my hand here. If her spinal cord is damaged, Carol won't be able to move her feet. Squeeze my hand, Carol. I'm holding your hand, Carol. Squeeze my hand. If she wakes up too much, she could move and damage the spinal cord. She could also become conscious of pain, the trauma of which might not be easily forgotten. Move your feet. Carol, move your feet. Okay, put her back to sleep. Okay. We're yes, good. We're good. Moving. We're excellent. We're excellent here. So she moved her feet. Yes, she did. Yeah, yeah great. Good job, guys. <laughs> All right, well done. Thank you. The anesthetist now works quickly to get Carol back to sleep before any pain is felt or spine movement detected. Yeah. On the last episode, Michelle underwent treatment to fight thyroid cancer and experience this fit and active 29-year-old magazine editor never expected. I was so in shock. I just couldn't believe that something this extraordinary could happen. They did an ultrasound and they found two uh, nodules. One of the nodules, they didn't have enough cells to make a, a conclusion. And then the other one, they said they were suspicious for uh, papillary carcinoma. So then I didn't sleep for five days. I just literally lay in bed and I mean, it was just, and, and upset, like, 
you know, crying and, and, and sort of scared and, and really pissed off. They do the surgery on Wednesday. Michelle's first treatment is removal of the thyroid. Here's to successful surgery, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and how else they that one? <laughs> Darn thyroid. <laughs> so we cut through the skin. Surgeon Kevin Higgins removes the thyroid, careful to protect both the voice box and windpipe. So, voila. So this is the thyroid gland, and this is her tumor right here, pooching out at us. With her thyroid out, Michelle will have to be on thyroid hormone replacement for the rest of her life to regulate her metabolism. Without it, she could suffer a host of problems, from lethargy and weight gain to memory impairment, depression, and hair loss. You okay? Two weeks after surgery, and Michelle's hormone balance has been achieved. All in all, I think I'm, I'm actually surprised at how um, I'm feeling. But surgery is only part of the treatment. There could still be microscopic rogue thyroid cells circulating in the body, ready to kickstart cancer growth again. As you know, it's, it's macroscopic surgery. It's not microscopic surgery. So there can be microscopic remnants of thyroid um, tissue left. So with radioactive iodine, we hope to ablate that tissue. Mm -hmm. To fight this off, radioactive iodine will have to be swallowed to target and kill off these potential rogue cells. But for the radioactive iodine to work, Michelle will first have to temporarily stop taking her hormone replacement. But unfortunately, it makes her profoundly hypothyroid, which is miserable. It's a miserable existence because you're tired, you're depressed, your voice changes because you get swelling, you can put on weight, it can affect your periods, your hair, your skin, your nails, it can affect everything. I'm a little bit nervous about going off tomorrow. As of tomorrow, I'll be going off the thyroid hormone. So I'm a little bit nervous about how I feel and what will be um, my, my energy level. To prepare for this phase of treatment, Michelle will have to take time off work. She's about to experience a cascade of unpleasant symptoms, including fatigue, confusion, memory loss, and weight gain that's going to make life pretty tough for a while. Michelle has been off thyroid replacement hormone for two weeks now, and she's feeling the effects of hypothyroidism. My surgeon told me I would feel, he used the word horrible actually. Um, symptoms of hypothyroidism include uh, fatigue and muscle soreness and depression and mood swings, difficulty, difficulty remembering things, loss of concentration. I knew that I was going to be tired occasionally, and I was. There were days when I was very tired. I keep saying, you know, that I feel like an old person because I'm moving slower and I'm not, and I have been getting out of shape. The goal of this phase of treatment is to radically reduce iodine levels in the body. Only this way can any rogue thyroid cells better absorb the radioactive iodine. A full body scan will then be able to detect them. Any remaining cells might or might not be cancer, and if they are found, her care team will take no chances. They could subject her to higher doses of radiation. After the iodine is ingested, Michelle will be radioactive and thus required to stay in isolation for three days. What we're going to be uh, doing today is giving you some radioactivity. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of the radioactivity is to get rid of any residual thyroid tissue left in your neck. Mm -hmm. If this radiation is going that's going to be you know, coming out of me mm -hmm. over the next couple of days is bad enough that people can't be around me. It, it just doesn't seem to jive that it's okay to be in me. And okay. is that just because the benefits simply outweigh the risks? The, the benefits outweigh the risks to you, mm -hmm. and there's no benefit to anybody else around you. There is a slight increased risk of other cancers. Radiation, what you do, you watch the time and the distance. So you keep the distance long and the time short. If in there, in a vial, one capsule, lift the lid off, look inside, you'll see the vial. 
and pop it directly to your mouth and drink all the water. Make sure it's gone down, let us know, and that's it. Okay. And then you leave. You're I can't wait to see what's in here. Lift it, put it down. Yep, that's it. Pop it straight to your mouth, straight to your mouth. It sort of seems like something out of science fiction, you know, that I have to take a pill out of a lead-lined container and that I can't be near people. All down. All down. Nice cold water, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Michelle is considered so radioactive that even a piece of gum will be contaminated and must be disposed of very carefully. Her isolation from other people for three days begins. It's been five hours since Carol's back surgery began. She and her family are looking forward to the pain relief this operation might provide. The fact that he told me that I can't be mobile and I can't take care of myself is a great relief and I'm really happy about that. Screws and rods are stabilizing Carol's back. Okay, that's it, perfect. X-rays are taken to ensure they're in good position. That looks pretty darn good. That shit looks perfect. Perfect, perfect, nice. The last cross pieces are put in place. Okay, that's good. Then, using the bones safely removed from her spine, the team prepares the bone graft that will be used to fuse vertebrae. They are now ready to close. Carol's family anxiously await the news from the OR. Michelle has endured three days of isolation, not even leaving her apartment to get a newspaper. My week of isolation wasn't the best time of my life, but it wasn't horrible. Each time you catch yourself, you know, with your finger in your mouth or blowing your nose or whatever, it's sort of a reminder of the fact that you're radioactive and that you have, you know, this, this health issue. She's now about to undergo a body scan to see if the radioactive iodine was absorbed by any remaining thyroid cells. The patient is radioactive and the scanner is picking up what's left in the patient and that's what we see on the screen. Is that okay, Ms. Kelly? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so 10 minutes, normal breathing. Try your best not to move. So the purpose of the test is to uh, destroy any residual thyroid tissue that may be left from the patient's surgery. Also, it all helps to detect if there's um, spread of disease throughout the body. So it's looking for thyroid metastases. Are you gonna tell me the results today? The radiologist will look at the report now, see if there's anything extra we have to do. The radiologist checks her scans. He's suspicious and requests another view. Sure. Okay. Okay, bye. Okay, so you have to do one extra picture, Miss Kelly. Our radiologist just took a, took a look and um, just needs to differ differentiate a structure in that area. Okay. I'm a little nervous now that they had to take two shots of one area of my body. Michelle won't know for a few days the results. If the scans show radioactive hotspots, it could mean thyroid cells still exist. In turn, this could mean cancer is lurking in them and more aggressive treatment will be needed to save her life. Dr. Ford is ready now to report to Carol's family on her surgery. Hi. Hi. Everything went extremely well. Really? Extremely well. Oh, and she's really? doing just fine. Okay, good. Everything was perfect. Oh, good. Was perfect. Good. 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 Perfect. Is that right? Neurologically, she's fine. We had no problems at all. The blood loss actually wasn't that bad. It's nowhere near as much as it, as it can be. And uh, we, we achieved the desired result. Uh, I don't know if this means anything to you, but... Uh, but if you remember before, there was a vertebrae in here that was wedged. It's completely gone now. We've taken it out completely. And now her spine is perfectly straight. Oh, my God. Uh, rather than the, the crooked spine that she had before. So that, that bump she had, that, that'll gone. be... It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Really? She's got a perfectly straight What's spine. What's the movement? Is she going to be like... The movement is she going to She's going to be fine. Fine. And She's pain? Fine. What about pain? Well, I would hope that it would be a lot less. Uh, when this works well, typically people report that things are much, much better than the way they were before, yeah? And she'll feel straighter, she'll be able to stand straighter, and she'll have much less pain. 
Okay. Well, She'll we'll see you later. Camper. Okay. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice meeting. Thank okay. you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Take care now. Ooh. I woke up with extreme pain, and the pain just wouldn't go away. And they gave me a morphine pump, and I would use it very often. Not beautiful. Huh? Not beautiful. Not beautiful. But the place is beautiful, so who cares? A few more hours, everything is going to be OK. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> She's OK. <laughs> She's OK. Michelle is about to learn the results of her scans. She's expecting good news. You had your whole body scan. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, actually this has uh, caused uh, a lot of anxiety over the last few days because uh, I got the report on Friday and um, was somewhat shocked. What they found is a focus of activity uh, in, the chest, in the chest, in your chest, and um, they've suggested that we do a CT scan of the chest. The other uh, activity was noticed in your um, abdomen, upper abdomen. Why is this happening? Uh, this go, is so that's exactly what I said, and that's why I had to review it. And uh, there was some uptake in the upper abdomen. And again, she thought it might reflect an artifact of uh, retained activity in your bowel or kidneys, just that hasn't been, I went through when that hadn't been excreted yet. But she thinks we should do an abdominal ultrasound just to be certain of that. Okay. Okay. We can't ignore what they saw on the scan, so we have to investigate it. Right. I don't trust so we're looking at a less than 5% chance, but nonetheless, we can't ignore it. It's two weeks later for Michelle, and she's back for more tests. Are thyroid cells still left in her body? Again, the radiologist is called in to look more closely and carefully. So we haven't seen anything to worry about. Oh. We just want to have a second look. Okay. okay, I saw you come in, I thought, uh oh. Can you tell me anything? Uh, there's just a cyst in your right kidney. But that's very common finding, so we don't need to worry about it. In spite of the doctor's reassurance, Michelle is worried. She'll need a CT to investigate the spot found on her chest. By far the worst part of being sick is, is not knowing what's going to happen. Because, you know, all that stress comes back and all the what ifs and all the why me's. And Michelle will have to wait an agonizing five days to learn whether or not the cancer has spread, threatening her life. It's been nearly a month since Carol's back surgery and she's beginning to learn what life is like again without devastating pain. I'm up at four in the morning, and I don't stop till six, seven in the evening. If that's any indication of how I'm feeling. That's now enough. the worries are over, and that is good. Well, no, now your worries are only starting. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I have now is, at the end of the day, like a hint of arthritic pain. Okay. But nothing that I'd well, need uh, well, anything for. That'll probably improve it then, as I said, with time. Carol's goal now is to end her dependency on pain medication, and so far she's down drastically on her need. But yeah, because you were you, were, you had that. Right now, I take one and a half Percocets, and I divide it into half, and that's strictly for the withdrawal thing that I don't want to get off totally. But I can't really say that I need it. Almost three years since a back injury nearly cost her mobility and a normal life, Carol is on her way to a full recovery returning to the woman her family and friends remember. You're back to the Carol you were years ago. That's the feedback I'm getting from everybody. Fearing bad news from Dr. Fettis, Michelle brings her mother to learn whether or not her cancer has spread. 
I saw you about three weeks ago. And then uh, we had some major concerns because we had seen some increase in uptake from the I-131 scan, both in the abdomen and in the chest. So uh, we went on to do an ultrasound of the abdomen um, on the advice of the radiologists. And fortunately, that was negative for any metastatic disease. Uh, we also did a CT scan of the chest. Uh, and uh, as we had suspected, the reason for the uptake was thymic tissue, uh, so that's just normal. So um, then with all of this information taken together, we don't have any evidence of metastatic disease. So that's great news. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle had the best possible thyroid cancer at the best possible stage that you can cure with good surgery and aftercare provided by the endocrinologist. I mean, it's amazing. It's like a giant weight being lifted off your shoulders and now I'm healthy and I can go back to my life and be a normal person again. On the next episode of Heartbeats, a gifted dancer is stopped in her steps by a disease increasingly common among the young. I noticed that I couldn't breathe properly and I was just feeling short of breath or my chest was feeling a little tight. I just wasn't able to dance anymore. And a champion figure skater suffers an injury that could push her dreams permanently off the ice. There is going to be some pain. The question is, is it pain which is preventing healing? I just want to skate again. For more information, go to www.wnetwork.com.